It's not RC. Adventures in Radio Control. Radio Control. Hey folks, this is part two to my review of the Hobby King Skipper. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, you might want to go check that out. Uh, here's a link to that. Now, I'm not going to go into the details about uh, you know, the size of the motor and the speed controller and all that stuff and the dimensions. If you're interested in this plan, you'll look up that stuff anyway. Um, what I did actually want to talk to everyone about is, uh, is the bottom on this thing. Um, obviously, it's styrofoam, which is fine, you know, it'll be okay in the water and stuff, but um, I've seen a lot of people flying this off grass and I guess uh, ice and snow and all that good sort of stuff, so I'm a little worried about how well this bottom will actually wear, you know, how ding-proof is this and do I need to do something about it? It just seems to me this is beautiful and smooth right now, but I can see it getting really chewed up really fast. So I think I want to do something about the bottom of this and reinforce it. I guess these little wing, wing tips here too could use some reinforcing. So uh, we're going to like play around and see if we can come up with some way of making this indestructible basically. Now, an obvious solution is just to take some packing tape, you know, and stick it on the bottom of the hole like that, you know, and that, that'll, that'll keep things fairly ding-proof. But this is going in water, and I don't think this is going to be the most permanent of uh, ways of ding-proofing it, so I don't think we're going to do that. So what else can we come up with here? So I was reading this episode of Fly RC the other day, and interestingly, uh, it just happened to feature this plane, but right across from it, uh, is this stuff called foam armor, which apparently uh, you paint onto your foam and it armors it up, makes it really tough. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, North American distributor for this seems to be backordered and backlogged, and I, I just can't buy this stuff in the US apparently. But I did some research, and um, from what I can tell, it's uh, PLA glue. I think I'm getting that right. Yeah, it's PLA, I think, and um, what that is is actually just good old wood, it's like white woodworking uh, glue, like Elmer's glue. So we're going to see what happens when you paint that on the foam and uh, see how tough that comes out. So rather than try this stuff out on the actual plane itself, uh, I want to experiment on uh, something else. And look, I found this packaging that it came in and it appears to be the same styrofoam. It may not be exact, I don't know, but it seems like a good test bed. So rather than mess up the plane, uh, I'm going to try it out on the packaging here. So. Oh, these little white things get everywhere. Eee, white beads. Alright, so there's a few pieces of that I can play around with. Alright, time to get scientific here. First thing we're going to do is weigh this piece of styrofoam. So we got to start... Wait, let's see here. That is 24 grams, very good, okay. All right, we got us some good old Elmer's glue all, uh, multi-purpose glue, which I be believe is PLA glue. Uh, so let's give that a whirl, see how she does. This is how to ruin a perfectly good paintbrush. Actually, this stuff should wash out, but it's water-based, so I'm gonna try painting it on Right out of the tube, you know, as thick as can be. Let's see how she goes on. Alright, that was pretty thick, so I'm going to dilute this remaining stuff here with a little bit of water. Maybe about 50 50, maybe. I'm going to put on a thinner coat here. Get that good mixed up. Kind of like milk, I guess. It goes on easier. Okay, we'll let that set up overnight. Uh, get it good and cured. In the meantime, I'll see if I can salvage this brush. Don't have high hopes for that though. For this to be a real test, I really should have something to compare it to, so I've got some carbon fiber weave I'm going to try out. And we're also going to try some fiberglass.
Here we have a couple more sample blocks of foam already pre-weighed. Uh, added some uh, 3M contact cement to the back of the uh, fiberglass and uh, carbon fiber so it'll stick down nicely. Next we add some epoxy finishing resin. And we uh, spread it around a little bit. Then using some paper towels, we wipe off the excess and do some blotting. Okay, there's our three samples. Uh, we'll let those set up overnight and we'll check them out tomorrow. Look what I just found at the hardware store. It's uh, undercoating and it's rubberized. That sounds like it might make some pretty good foam armor. So that is the latest sample. Um, I put a bit of fiberglass cloth on the bottom of this. Um, thought maybe this rubberized stuff will work with the fiberglass. Maybe not. We'll test it on this area, which doesn't have any fiberglass. So let's give it a try. Hey, X. Huh. That looks like it's eating the styrofoam to me. Oh yeah, that's not good. Yeah, that's having a real nasty reaction with the styrofoam. Ooh, it stinks too. Yeah, that's not going to work for us. I'm melting, I'm melting. Ooh. All right, well, I'm gonna forget about this stuff, I guess. Sure, I'll find some other use for it. Oh well. Right then, everything's cured up and ready to roll. Um, I've reweighed everything, and after some somewhat dubious math, um, this is what I've concluded it will add to my model airplane uh, if I apply the various things. So basically, the uh, the wood glue doesn't weigh anything at all. I'm guessing because it's mostly water, it just sort of evaporates and just leaves some sort of pasty stuff. Uh, the fiberglass, uh, it's going to add about half an ounce to my plane, looks like, which isn't too bad. And the carbon fiber, which is pretty thick weave on there, uh, that's going to add, uh, you know, almost an ounce. So, uh, interesting. All right, first test will be the hammer test, my favorite. Um, these pieces have been coated. Uh, this is my control piece, which is uncoated. So I'm going to try to do this somewhat scientifically. So I'm just going to pinch the bottom of the hammer and just let it fall on its own. And hopefully that'll come out somewhat even. So here we go. Okay, a little ding in that one. And put a ding in the wood glue. Let's try the thin wood glue. Yep, yeah, that put a ding in there. All right, I'm guessing this fiberglass is going to be pretty resi resilient. So here we go. Dented it, but didn't break through. And the carbon fiber. Here we go. Yeah, can't even see any mark on that. Okay, interesting. Let's try that one more time, just with a gentle whack. A little harder this time. Yeah, it's a big dent. Big dent. Big dent. Ooh. That's interesting. Let's see what it did there. It kind of, you can see in this light, kind of bent the whole piece. Interesting. Alright, carbon fiber. No doubt carbon fiber is pretty darn indestructible. Okay, next. All right, this will be the abrasion test. This is my drill press here, and on the end of it, I've mounted this nasty little wire brush. This thing's uh, pretty scratchy, so um, you get the idea. So let's subject our samples to that torture. 
This would be the uncoated control piece and pretty much illustrates why I'm thinking this is a good idea to protect the bottom of my boat somehow. And here's the Elmer's glue, utterly failing. Yeah, that's going to be completely annihilated. The fiberglass, as expected, uh, seems to be holding up much, much better. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's doing alright. I think it'll eventually just wear through it, but uh, that's, that's pretty durable. Ordinarily, carbon fiber isn't that abrasion resistant. Uh, for example, you can sand it really easily, but uh, coat it with some uh, epoxy resin and it, it just, uh, I don't know, it, it's not taking a, a scratch at all here. Look at this, it's absolutely unaffected. That's pretty impressive. Next we have a uh, poke it with a spiky thing test. Oh, one of my favorites. There's the control. Yeah, that went in pretty good. Uh, went in about, I don't know, three eighths of an inch. Same thing with the uh, wood glue. You're right into the fiberglass. That ended up, went in about an eighth of an inch to the fiberglass. And the carbon fiber. <laughs> of course, it just bounced right off. Try that little higher. Yeah, actually, went in that time. This is barely. So from about two feet, it kind of barely went in. All right, carbon fiber is a winner on that one. Fiberglass actually is not that good. It's sort of. Ooh, fiberglass doesn't offer much protection as far as that's concerned. Hmm. Carbon fiber is clearly the winner there. <laughs> Alrighty. Now the other thing I got to consider is, uh, you know, this plane has got to zip across the uh, surface of the water and the ice and the snow and the grass, and it's got to be somewhat friction-free, you know. So, you know, obviously the original styrofoam has got a little bit of texture to it; it's pretty smooth. The wood glue produces a real nice glossy finish on it. This feels really smooth. The fiberglass is—you can feel a little bit of the weave, but it's that's pretty smooth. Carbon fiber is like, um, yeah, it's like snake skin. It's got a real serious texture to it. Um, is that a problem though? I don't know, because that, um, in some ways, uh, you know, like shark skin, they say, is actually, you know, designed to cut through the water because it, it creates little, I don't know, eddies or something. And so yeah, that might not actually be a problem, so I don't know. Interesting. Okay, what have we learned here? Well, styrofoam on its own is not very good. It's very soft and it breaks. No good. If we smother Elmer's wood glue all over it, it, it gets shiny. And uh, yeah, that's not very good. Fiberglass, uh, everyone's favorite. Um, it's abrasion uh, resistant, but not puncture resistant. Yeah, I like that. Look at carbon fiber. Oh yeah, space age stuff. I think that's what we're gonna do. I mean, this stuff is just indestructible. It's gonna last forever, and uh, it's gonna uh, make my plane weigh about four percent more, which is not really much in the whole scheme of things. So we're gonna do that. Cool. Good old Super 77, we like this stuff. Oh yeah. Sticky, sticky, sticky. So I like to uh, spray the uh, contact cement on the back of the uh, cloth first and then uh, stick it down with that. Makes life a lot easier. We're down to come, fiber we are. Try not to get a splinter. Yeah, that's no joke about getting a carbon fiber splinter. You definitely don't want to do that. Ah, uh, roll of tape though, that works pretty good. And of course we don't want to forget the wingtip skids. So this video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to try to zip through these next few steps here, but basically uh, apply some finishing resin, uh, spread it all around, let it sink in a little bit, uh, then 
wipe off the excess and do lots of blooding and make it all really light and uh, yeah you don't need lots of resin uh, to make it strong. This would be the next day when the uh, resin's all good and cured. Uh, time to do some trimming. No, this is not the space shuttle, uh, but I did decide to wrap the carbon fiber around the nose a little bit. I thought that might be a good idea. Here we are doing a little trimming with the razor saw. Uh, here we are cleaning up the edges a little bit. Uh, I did add some blue tape down the side of the uh, fuselage to help protect the foam while I'm doing this sanding. Otherwise you'll tear it up pretty good. You definitely want to clean up after yourself when you're working with carbon fiber. Do not leave this stuff around your workshop. It's not good for you. And of course, wear yourself a respirator mask. Again, it's not good for you to breathe that stuff in. I can breathe again, I can breathe. Yeah, I don't want to mess around with that carbon fiber dust. Bad news. Alright, let's see what we got here. Oh, that looks pretty sharp. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> seriously strong. Yeah, that came out real nice. I love the way carbon fiber sands. It's just like a dream to sand. Ah yeah, that's that's really nice. Yeah, I think that came out good. I like it. Yeah, even my little space shuttle nose is it. Ah yeah, look at that. Very nice, very nice. Okay, we are reinforced. Sweet. So let's see, the instructions here call for a 1300 milliamp battery. Check, got one of those. Ah, I did run into a small problem though. As you can see here, they've, uh, they've marked where the battery should go, which is very nice. Well, that would be perfect, except of course I've done changed the whole uh, balance of this thing by putting the carbon fiber on the bottom. So if I put the battery there, it is now really nose heavy. So what I'm having to do is rearrange a few things inside, move the battery back a bit, but anyway, yeah, we gotta get her balanced. Shouldn't be a problem though. Alright, I think that's about balanced. Looking pretty good. It's one of those planes that really doesn't balance easily up on the balance stand. You probably do it inverted, but I can kind of, I don't know if it's easy. I think that's pretty good. Well, there you have it. Uh, that's how I went about reinforcing the bottom on my uh, Hobby King Skipper. I'm pretty confident I should be able to run that on just about anything now, and uh, it should last a good long while. Well, that's assuming I don't crash it, that is. If you'd like to see flight footage of this, uh, check out part one. I uh, covered lots of flight footage in that video. I think I'm going to do another video in this series about how to remove the evil Hobby King decals that come plastered all over this thing. Uh, anyway, stay tuned, uh, happy flying, and uh, subscribe if you like this sort of thing. Take care.